Hey everyone, it's Chad here from the Electric Academy. Today we're going to be continuing on with the little mini series I'm doing on 9 lead motor connections. Last time we talked about the Y connection. You can take a look at it by just hitting on that I up above there and you can go back and watch that. This week we're talking about the Delta connections. So today as I was driving home from work, I started thinking about the video. And then I started thinking as I was driving, I drove actually past one of the greenhouses where I started doing my apprenticeship. And so I started thinking about the first time I actually encountered motors. And it was probably in my first year. I remember going out to one of the motors in the greenhouse and it had all these line, like all these leads coming out of the motor connection box. And that this doesn't make any sense. Like usually it's just three leads coming out. And then I looked at the nameplate because I knew enough to actually look at the nameplate. And then it, on the nameplate it said 300, 600 and I had no clue what was going on. And I started realizing that these whole, like these connection diagrams can be super confusing. So what I really wanna encourage you to do is, as you're watching these videos, hit pause and kind of just look at the diagrams and see as you can trace them out. So let's hop into the old whiteboard app here. Gonna fire it up. Now last time we dealt with the Y configuration. Why is it called a Y? Because it looks literally like a Y. Each winding, however, is 120 degrees out of phase with one another. If you want to know more about Y and Delta, click on the I up above there because there's a little video that I've done on an overview of Y versus Delta, the differences, the uses, and all that fun stuff. Click on there, you'll get a good understanding of what's, what we're dealing with here. So last week we talked about the Y. This week we're going to talk about the Delta. You take a look here to the left where Beyonce keeps everything in a box. And you notice that we've got this triangle here that's delta. It's a Greek symbol for delta. That's why we call it delta because it's like it's a triangle, right? Again, each one of these windings is 120 degrees out of phase with one another. It's just in a different configuration. So let's go ahead and we're going to get rid of this Y off the screen. We're going to move over to our delta connection and we're going to start with our high voltage connection. Now when we're dealing with these windings, they're a lot like transformers. And if you want to know more about transformers, you can click on the eye up above. There should be a, bit, a little link to a a description on how transformer ratings work. It's very similar to how these motor ratings work. We'll take this motor and let's just say that we're dealing with a motor that's got a rating of 300 volts or 600 volts. What we do is we say that each one of these windings is rated for the lower voltage. That means that each one of these windings here that we're, we've, we're dealing with with this delta is rated for 300 volts. So if we want to go ahead and connect them to the higher voltage to 600 volts, that means we need to connect them in series because when we have voltages in series, they add, right? So what we'll do here is we'll figure out how to connect all these leads up so that we get a series connection. Now our first step when we're dealing with any three phase motor, especially when we're dealing with the nine lead motors, we need to number them up. So what we'll do is we're gonna start at the top and work our way counterclockwise like we do with like we did with the Y configuration. We're doing it with the delta as well. I'm gonna pick a nice red. I'm gonna start at the top and work counterclockwise. So we've got one. Then we go to the next corner, two, three, then we go up to the top, four, down again to here, five, six, seven eight, nine. So the hard part is done now. We've numbered up the leads, especially when we're dealing with this high voltage connection, because all we want to do is make sure that we connect these windings in series. Honestly, it doesn't get any simpler than this. Watch with me here. We're going to take this and we're going to connect our four and our seven together. So that makes that series connection. We're going to connect our six and our nine together. There's that series connection. And down below, we're gonna connect our five and our eight together. That's that series connection. Then what we can do is we can connect line one to one. We can connect line two to two. And we can connect line three to three. Done. We've got our series connection and we've got our lines hooked up here. So if we write in the top here, and I might run out of room because of the joining box is a little too small there, but line one goes to one, line two goes to two, line three goes to three, not so hard. And then we're gonna join four and seven, four and seven get joined, then we know that six and nine get joined, and then we know that five and eight get joined. I'll put that underneath here, five and eight. So those are the joining ones. So you make those connections with your wire knots, your marats, or whatever you wanna put it in there. 
So that's a serious connection for the higher voltage. The next up, which gets a little trickier, is the lower voltage. So let's take a look what we're, we're dealing with with that. So the same idea, it's a delta configuration. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna number up all these things. Let me just get rid of what I just did there. We're gonna number up all our leads just like we did before. But then what we have to do is remember that when we are dealing with voltages in parallel, they stay the same. So we know that each one of these windings can handle 300 volts. And if we're gonna put 300 volts on them, then we need to figure out a way to connect these windings in parallel. And that's where it can get tricky, but with all things electrical, it can always be simplified. And so let me show you what I, I teach my students or what I, what I do myself. What I've done here is I know that I wanna take this winding and parallel it with that winding. I wanna take this winding and parallel it with this winding. And I wanna take this winding and parallel it with this winding. So basically what I've done is I've just redrawn the circuit here. I've got those windings in parallel, those windings in parallel, and those windings in parallel. So again, in order for us to make this work, we have to number it up. We're gonna be experts at this. So let's pick our nice red hue again. And we're gonna start, whoops. And we're gonna start at the top. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we've got it numbered up. The hard part's done, honestly. What we're gonna do is take these numbers and transfer them over to this nice drawing that we've done on the side. So what we'll do here, again, going with the red, is I'm gonna say, okay, I've got one and nine is a winding. I wanna parallel the one and nine, this winding here with this winding here, so with the six and the three. So what I'll do is I will just draw that in. So one and nine, so one should go to six, and that should go to three. So that takes care of those two windings. Next up, what we'll do is we'll just move over to the next. So we want one and four, these windings here, to be paralleled with seven and two. So that means we have one and four. We want that paralleled with seven and two. And then we have our bottom ones. We have two and five, we want to parallel with eight and three. So let's write those in. We've got two and five, we want that paralleled with eight and three. Now honestly, totally it's all done. The hard part is completely done. What we're gonna do now is, and bear with me, is I'm gonna take this drawing here and I'm gonna convert it back to here. I'm gonna make my connections I'm gonna show you exactly how this all plays out. Okay, so we're gonna change colors here because it just makes more sense too. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna see that I've got my one needs to move over to six. So if we do this, my one, we go up, over, down, and across to six. And that my nine is attached to three. My nine is attached to three. So that takes care of that side. On the other side, this side right over here, I've got one needs to attach to seven and four needs attached to two. So I go one, up, over, down to seven, four, up, over, down to two. Then on the bottom side, we're doing very similar. We've got eight we need to attach to two and three to five. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna go over here, eight and to two and five to three. We've made our connections, congratulations, we've done it. So next up, what we have to do is we have to look where we're connecting our lines to. One, two, three, baby, that's it. It's the same thing as it was before because we have our ones coming in. So we'll go with red. This goes up here. So I'm gonna go with red, black, blue. Congratulations, you have a three phase low voltage connection on your Delta. Now let's write it in our little motor connection diagram here. So line one, line two, line three goes to one, two, three. Now we're gonna make our joinings, or our, yeah, the joinings here. So we're gonna say that we see that one, six, and seven are all connected together. Let me just show you here. So you got one connects to seven, but it also connects to six. 
So one, six, and seven connect together. One, six, and seven. Then we're gonna take a look at the two. So two connects to eight, but it also connects to four. Let me just show you here. Two connects over to eight, but also connects to four. So two, four, and eight is another connection. And then our last one we look at is going to be the three connects to five and also connects to nine. So three, five, nine. Three, five, and nine. We've made our connections. Everything's gonna be fine. And that's it. So again, as we work with these things, remember, try not to overcomplicate them. Take it nice and slow, draw it out, and you'll start seeing there's connections there. I highly recommend, especially for the low voltage, is maybe rewind this and watch it again. It will click. I promise every time I've taught this to my students, it takes a couple goes, but then it, you just kind of click into how it works because remember, it's parallel. And that's the thing that kind of trips people up is the idea that it is parallel and it's a very common circuit, but you're so used to seeing these windings in weird shapes that it kind of throws you off. All right, that's all I've got for this week. That's the, finish, the finishing touches on our little mini series on Y connections and Delta connections. I thought about doing them both at the same time, but it was just gonna be too long a video. If you're getting any value out of these videos, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out, give it a like, and please make a comment down below if you agree with what's been going on here. If there's little tricks that you understand or know or use, please make a comment down below. Every little bit of engagement helps get the word out and gets helps the channel kind of grow more and more, which allows me to go ahead and make more videos. Love doing these. I hope you are all having a great week and we'll see you next week. Stay classy.